to another episode of Amy J Experience. And today we are on tour in the beautiful Adelaide of the Ghana people. So thank you to the traditional custodians of the land for having us on their lovely, beautiful, hot as fuck, steamy land. Right. So we are in the of Adelaide Championship Wrestling. And today we are talking to one of the most badass bitches I've met. She's the royalty of South Australian wrestling. And she is the killer queen, Riley. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We've also got the sadistic spirit, Jahari. Uh, No murderous mayhem because she's not allowed across the border because she has a record now. So... She's not. She won't be traveling with us. Shame. But yeah, it is a bit of a shame. It is a bit of a shame. But thank you for having us, Dee. It's nice. Thank you for coming. Are you excited? Yes. Nervous. Nervous. Uh, Why are you nervous? Why? It means you care. Yeah. That's a good thing. Nerves. <laughs> nerves are a good thing. Nerves are a very good thing. Also, guys, we've got some beautiful prehistoric death cult voodoo dolls available on our online store. Link in description. You can get your phone claws. You can get a bunch of cool shit. It's in uh, shirts, shirts, uh, masks, masks, stickers, foam hands, claws, you name it. You Pre- name historic it. death cult, dog square, dog side. That's it. Link in description. That's it. That's it. Now, Miss Riley, have you ever had a reading? I have had a reading. So Not where, yourself. Where, where have you had your reading? So my mum does readings. And so she actually does them for me almost every day. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. That's really cool. Do you know what sort of cards she uses? She uses all different ones, and it depends on what she feels drawn to at the time. So she will go. She's got so many decks. So yeah, cool. She's a wise witch. She feels which one is going to be. This one's calling to her. Yep, yep. That's cool. I like that. So I'm going to give you a, a reading from my ancestors. So it's not so much like a tell your future. It's more I'm going to see what your spirit's about, which is cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, I like that. We'll wake them up. Can I get my boy? Wake up, guys. Four. Four. It's good stuff. All right. You're a bit sticky today because it's hot. It's <laughs> so hot in you. Oh, my God. All right, pick me a card. Okay. I'm just done. That's what it's big. Praise be. Ooh, okay, cool. You got the card of change, the card of lightning, right? Ooh, card of lightning. And if I'm honest, I think we know what this card is about. You, you've you created a change in many ways. You've created a change in many people's lives, whether it be from the people who start here, the rookies, the women in here. You've changed their lives in a more positive way. You're a mother. You're a mentor. You're a coach. And by all of these things, you've changed lives. And I I feel like that's one of your roles is to create change and create an opportunity for people to change and to grow. And I think your school is a good um, foundation for that. Yeah. You know? But I also feel like the spirits are kind of giving me like goosebumps, kind of like electricity in my arms at the moment. And it's kind of like you went through a specific, physical change recently is that right yeah 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 what was that so i well i've just recently made a comeback i've had three years off from um suffering from autoimmune disease so huh? autoimmune disease <laughs> so yeah with that so it just took me out meaning that i was getting like a lot of inflammation within my body and i was just picking up all these like random injuries and I couldn't wrestle anymore without being hurt so bursitis throughout all my body and all this sort of stuff and so I had to hang up the boots uh three years ago and I've just managed to find my way back just gonna find go my way back. going for that yeah but yeah yeah so you could say you've nearly escaped death once before yeah sort of you know like I, it did you know like to not be able to do something that you like really love and that you're really passionate about and to not be able to get in that ring without actually just being hurt all the time to then 
like I had to go on this like like this discovery right like I tried all these things and I did all the doctors and all that sort of bullshit right and nothing nothing worked you know like and it was all the specialists and everything like that and so I had to there was one last ditch uh last ditch effort this year which was to oh sorry last year I should say now and which was to head towards carnivore diet Carnival yeah. diet. Carnival Shout diet. out. Yeah. Pre-start death cult on the carnival diet. Yeah, we'll yeah. show you some clips now. That inspired us. Oh, stop it. Stop it. But it's so good. You know, like people think that, you know, I think we're, we're trying that a certain sort of way that you're meant to live and then and just balance this and balance that. But. You know, when you get to a point, and it's a point of desperation, right? Where you nothing works. So then you try this thing, and by basically eliminating everything out of your body, and what you're doing is you're eliminating like foods that are actually causing this inflammation. Mm-hmm. So, and then it got to a point of doing it and becoming inflammation free, which meant then I'm not, but I have bursitis. I don't have these these problems anymore, and then I can run and I can bump and I can do all the things that I just couldn't do before to make it then a reality i made people promise like three years ago that i would come back and that i would find a way and i think when you get to a point of three years you do sort of give up a bit right like you're like defeated yeah you just like how what how like you know i've tried everything so so now what you know but you were just so desperate to get back in there and here we are yeah well i'm glad you did i'm i'm really glad to hear because i remember hearing about you go through this process and if I'm honest I was a little concerned I was a little worried because I care about you I respect you and I respect what you give people you give people opportunities you give people up like and that's in wrestling especially it's so rare to have a, a female do that and it's badass as shit you know and I'm glad you got your health back on track and it's it's weird that they don't tell you this sort of shit at school or like educate us on what sort of foods actually can fuck you up. And like, I don't even think, you know, like not at this point, not even doctors are on board with it. You know? Doctors are fucked. They, you know, like they're like, no, they're just stuck in these old ways. But, you know, we don't have a, um, we have a sick care system. We don't have a health care system. We have a, a sick care system and, and we want to treat people for being sick, but we actually don't want to heal them either because, you know, so it makes money out of that. I said. Fuck the pharmaceutical companies. They can all eat my shit. Fuck big when pharma. I get rich, I'm going to burn all those fucking buildings down. Because I agree. I think the shit on the pharmaceutical companies. Yes. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's good shit. It is good, good shit. shit. Yeah, no, nah, fuck them. They're horrible. I, I agree. I, yeah, no. Nah. Growing up, I had real bad asthma. Asthma. I got bit by the asthma monster. And I was fucked, right? Stunted my growth. I'm tiny because of it. No, and you're just tiny. Shut up. And I was on a bunch of medications growing up, like heaps. I was an addict to, you know, steroids for my lungs. And when I had more control over my body, when I became an adult, I tried different ways to wean off that. And I barely have my medication yeah. now because I work out so much. Wrestling is worked out my lungs uh, given me a different cardio different perspective and stuff and i haven't i had an asthma attack in yeah years this way wow. you know and it's fuck the pharmaceuticals i think exactly. their medication was making me better for a short term but long term the side effects of these medications were well, you the line. yeah i was coming i became reliant like i couldn't i couldn't run around the block without having ventilator you know what i mean now I can run 20 minutes without ventilin. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm sweet. You know, and it's, I can't believe everything the doctors tell you. No, it's true. And they, they're so quick to prescribe a pill or a medication yeah. without actually getting to a re, uh, like a root cause and anything. So with this stuff I went through, they put on an anti malaria medication. Right. And they're in part of, you know, the side effects <laughs> of this sort of shit. It's <laughs> like, it can like stop your peripheral vision, you know, like, so it's like take this medication to help you. But he's going to like fuck with your vision. But you'll be blind. Like, you know, where, where's the reasoning behind? And again, you know, guess what? The medication did nothing. So I didn't feel any better on the medication. Like it literally did nothing. And it was just, it was just so many just unanswered questions the whole time. And I think it's funny enough that, you know, when going over the carnival, you know, like the things like 
energy came back. Like I had energy like I was a kid again, you know, like, and it's just, and strength and like pain, like all the chronic pain that I was in is just gone. And it's just the body then has a funny way of being able to heal itself. And I think that when you are in tune with yourself as well, is that you often have the answers, right? Like you know what's best for you. And I think deep down, like I think too many of us are not in with our own intuition, right? So we don't listen to ourselves and we're just worried about, oh, what the doctor said or what this said, you know. But sometimes you have a deep knowing, in my opinion, that you you sort of know and you know how you can fix yourself and heal yourself. Like obviously there's some things you can't, but there's a lot of stuff and you know, you're looking for more natural alternatives and different sort of things. You know, and exploring that, um, as well as you know, mindset things like meditation, like the whole sort of you know this holistic approach rather than here's a pill. Right. Yeah, no, nah, fuck pills, man. No, nah, I don't. I don't vibe with that. I don't vibe with that at all. Um, and in in my culture, we call our intuition our mui. Mui. So when you when you hear your mui and you don't listen to it, your mui actually gets mad at you. Yeah. And you know, the, the more, the less you listen, the worse life gets. The more you listen, the easier life gets. So you listen to a movie, guys. If your doctor's giving you pills, shove them up their bum. All right? I don't want those sorts of pills. Yeah, listen to your son first. Speaking mouth of cancer of pills. Or hey, listen here. No, 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 there's mouth cancer pills for cats out here, all right? God damn. Enough cats are dying of mouth cancer as we speak. We don't want any more. It's epidemic. Speaking of dying of mouth cancer, you should pull another card. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's pull right. another card. This one is saying, pull me. Pull you the one. <laughs> the cheeky card. The cards are cheeky. <laughs> this is this. All right. This is fucking cool card. So you got the card of independence, but. It's the red belly black snake. Now, some people would think this is a negative card because the red belly black snake is one of the most venomous snakes in the whole entire world. So you get bit by a red belly black snake, you got about five fucking minutes before right. you're, maybe even less. Before you die of mouth cancer. Not even. Before your blood literally clots inside you and you just become one big ball of jello. All right. Yum. It's, it's pretty intense and it's pretty badass, but they're also solo creatures. So red belly black snake, they have their young and then they fuck off their young and they the mother goes and they work it out for themselves, right? They're a big predatory animal. Um, but in this sort of sense, I feel like you're a very independent person. You're a very strong person, but also you're the sort of person that if someone came up to you and questioned you or your motives or morals you're not afraid to spit some venom all right you're not afraid to stand up for yourself you're not afraid to speak your mind that's why she's the killer queen that's, that's it that's it she spits like venom she bites like venom like she's you're that and if you look at the card there's all of these things intertwined in and the vision that i'm getting is you're one of those snakes, right? But you're on many paths. You're also the path holder for many other people. And I feel like you're teaching a lot of, of your younger women and your younger boys and men independence. You're teaching them how to be a, an adult, you know? Yeah. And that's it takes courage. It takes a lot of guts to do. You're essentially... The vibe I get from you is you're very much a matriarch of your area. You are the showman of independence. You are. And I feel like you are teaching those qualities to people. And those qualities are never, those people are never going to forget those qualities. I mean, so do they do. Oh, it's your birthday, the 28th? It's your oh. birthday. Ah, so that is you. You're the red belly oh. black snake. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty rad. I like that a lot. That's a powerful card. I like that. That's a very fucking That's powerful. Big card. That's a very passionate card too, because it's got lots of rainbow on the outside. And a lot of people will go, "Oh, it's really negative because it's a bad animal." But it's not a bad animal. It's just an animal that stands up for themselves. And if you really set up for yourself, are you a bad person, or you just not a pushover? I don't know. I don't think she's a bad person. She's not a pushover. And I think that's definitely what we try and teach. You know, we've got some girls coming up in here and uh, teaching them about. You're being strong and independent and, and true to themselves and not to follow everyone else's path, but to 
Smoke the iron. Yeah. 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 And I don't think there's many people doing that in the country. You know, I think that's what you guys have here. It's very, it's very fucking raw. It's very fucking grassroots. And it's a little community. Yeah. And what the kids have here is pretty fucking good. It yeah. reminds me a lot of what we have back home at Relentless. Like Relentless Gate has given us a place to learn, a place to grow, a place to fuck up and make mistakes. Um, but we still care for each other. We still look out for each other. We look well, we look after each other like siblings. You know, like we fight in there, we battle in there, but push came to shove. I know all those boys have my back. I know all those girls yeah. at Relentless have my back. And I feel like that's the same vibe here. Yeah. That's and more. that's extremely rare. It's less rare than you think. And it's something that we need to bring back. Yeah. No, I just think we're really proud of to be here. Like it, we we went out to create something where we could be more inclusive, to have people, you know, have a home where they might not have shit in somewhere else. You know, like, and that's, I think we, we try to protect our culture here as much as possible as well. Yeah. I think it's like really important to, Sometimes you can get, just like, it's important to stay the course, but sometimes you can get a little bit distracted, right? You can bring in some facets, like flashing lights and everything like that, but to the core and to the essence of just remembering and being true to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I vibe with that. I vibe with that. I vibe with that. I have a, a random question now. Do you believe in aliens? I've never I asked you this. I've known you for years. I don't not believe in aliens. Like I'm open to that possibility. I don't. So what's your question, Isabel? Why, why don't you fully send it? I just, <coughs> it just, I don't know. I guess because I haven't met one. <laughs> you sure about that? Well, I know. I'm, I'm not like, I'm not, no, and I'm not. Yeah, so I guess it's just not something that I've focused on. I've <laughs> thought so on, but I never closed off to the possibility that there is something else, like, out my like, being yeah i'm definitely like i'm a spiritual person so i i, I believe in this other sort of stuff but like, you know whether we're like naming it or like is it you know in outer space or something what what would have to happen if, other than a big gray fucker standing right in front of you for you to believe that aliens are real no do you know what? i think it's a, i think it's part of a childhood fear huh ah, yeah see. <laughs> But just stare, there, down, that's unlocked. <laughs> stare down the barrel and let them know about your alien trauma. Okay, I would have been eight years old. <laughs> and it was the summertime. It was the summertime. We were, no, we were on a trip to Queensland and they used to have these like bowling clubs up there. You know, like these big RSL bowling clubs, right? And the parents would all wear like pink food and take pokies on. That's where it all goes down. And they forget about the kids. Yeah, they yeah. kids field. clubs, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, like suburban housewife going. Yeah. And, you know, and you like, so go to this kids' club thing and you're sitting there and, and they're watching this movie. And the movie was called, I still remember the movie, it was called Fire in the Sky. And it was based on a true story. And it was probably the first time I'd watched a movie at that age that was sort of, you know, based on a true story, all right? And it was about this, I don't even remember all the movie now, but it was about basically an alien with ducks, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and then there's like these guys like driving in the car and there's like this big, like it looks like this fire in the sky. And then takes him away and then there's like these like cocoon things and it's all like, and I don't know what it was about it when I was eight years old. I found it so traumatic. And it, for ages, we'd be driving in the car and I would freak out if there wasn't a car in front of us and a car behind us was like, felt like we were going to stay. It sucked up. And then, so then I think I might have just like, just shut the fuck tape there on our legs. No, I'm good there. Let's get a big shout out to the director of Fire in the Sky for causing generational trauma. Big up to generational Trauma. Shout out generational trauma. It's my favorite type. Yeah, my sister, she was scared of uh, E.T. And obviously me and my other siblings thought it was fucking hilarious. Anytime E.T. would come on the screen or she'd eat, see E.T. merch or whatever, she'd just look. <laughs> and she would just go silent and be like, you're right, you just go mute. Like, you good? Uh-uh. You good? And she's we can't do it. So we would always put it on. Oh, I want to watch ET. We'd make her watch it. And we'd wow. put her through hell. Every time there was the scene where the ET comes out of the closet and he's like, eee! my sister would just start. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't handle it. It was fucking hilarious. Do you guys know the story behind ET with Drew Barrymore? No. So Steve, 
Drew Barrymore did not know that E.T. was not real. So she was like four or five years old at the time, right? This is great news. Right. And um, what they did, <laughs> Susie, because he's, uh, he was, you know, sorry, spoiler, E.T. was a robot. What? They would I didn't know that. Him. They would I work seen the, the room. robot. With, so she would go and talk to him and someone would work the robot. So Steven Spiel, oh. still, uh, Spielberg never wanted her to know that he wasn't real. Oh, that's actually really yeah. sweet. So like, he would, she would go and talk to him and, you know, he would actually like talking about it. He would work the animatronics with her and, like, yeah, it was like a whole thing. That's really beautiful. That's your random, like, fact for today. That's really cute. That's all. See, we need to keep the magic of that sort of stuff in life still real. Santa's real, guys. No. Tooth Fairy is real. Nope. Yes, he is. Nope. Tooth Fairy is real. I, I, reckon, I, I, ate I reckon the Tooth Fairy is hot as fuck. They're dead. I ate them both. Chad, gone, gone. I don't know why. Gone. I think it's like cool though. Like if you think about it, and I was thinking about this from a parent perspective. Yeah. Right. Is when everybody, majority of people in the world come together to protect the magic of Christmas for children. Yeah. You know, like you would never just randomly be like, hey, you know. I ate him. You know, I ate him. Like, I don't know. It's just like the weirdest thing to think of. Was like everybody in the world coming together to like, Protect the sub. Yeah, we're sort of safe. Yeah, he's, he's real. He's real. He comes in my house every year. Right. He leaves some footprints. Oh, yeah. Wow. No, we don't have cookies. We only have parrots. Snowy we only footprints. have parrots. The snowy, yeah. What, wow. Where I'm from wasn't snow, it was red dirt because we don't have snow. Yeah. So he would leave Big some dumb red, red dirt. dirt piece of shit over here. Look at it. Look at his dumb fucking forehead. Look how big it is. Wow. It's like Uluru. That's crazy. My forehead, it's inspired by Uluru. Speaking of big foreheads, now. actually. Like I think... Selby face? Huh? My forehead? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good shit. Let's get my forehead on there. We'll show you the picture. We'll show you guys the picture of a big fucking forehead. <laughs> Speaking of massive foreheads, I think it's time for a thumb walk. You're up. You're up. You're all right. I'm up. All right. We need a referee. Where's our referee? Where's our ref? We need a referee. All right. Riley, we're gonna have it's a goddamn rest. Let, let, on Alright. Like, okay, side by side. Alright, rest. We're gonna referee this stop wall. Round old school. Do we bow? Do we do yes. the whole thing? Yes. Like one, yeah, like 1, Alright. Do you know the rules of thumb wall? I know thumb wars. So. That's all you know? Alright, cool. He's trained in thumb wars, fellas. <laughs> Alright, I trust you. On your call. Cool. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb walk. You better fucking win. You better win, Erica. I lose every time. You better fucking win. Oh, oh you better not your shoulder, oh, your shoulder, your elbow on a table. Win. What's over there? Oh, she's a. Oh, no. One, two, three. three. Oh, yeah. It counts. It counts. It counts. It counts. I won the first ever one. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Refit. That's big. What are you yeah. getting saved, Get the what fuck the out of here. Wrestling. Get the what? fuck out of the oh. shop. I think the last time I checked, you taught me wrestling, not wrestling. Oh. Bloody hell. That's good shit. That's good shit. Finally, I won. Literally, I've lost every damn episode. So, this. Move over, god damn it. That's it, sorry. All right? Move over. No. Move over, yeah, you know. loser. Yeah. Not really, I didn't know. Wow. What is... I, I, what is your favorite match you've ever had? Ooh, that's tough. That is tough. Could be singles, in the gender, whatever. Because you, you're, you're an artist of many arts. Yeah. All time favorite. Or, I call it like, I, I've probably got a couple. So I did, I, um, Definitely Wrestle and Sid was one of my favourites. You Wrestle and Sid. How many yeah. times have you Wrestle and Sid? Twice. Twice. I said twice. So Today's going to be the third time. Yes. Third time the charm. Third time the charm. Good luck. I think I've lost them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was a singles and a triples right with that. I've loved How about just with yourself. Uh, I think for me, it just brought a lot more out. And, you know, we had a match recently as well. And that just brought some fun back to me instead of taking things so seriously. And then without a yeah, definitely when I won the yeah, ACW Evolve Championship. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I remember that. Who did you, who's your fight in that one? So that was Isaac Bailey for that one? Yep. 
and yeah it just you know like I was the first person to win it so it was like your normal your normal championship it was my first proper championship so it just it's just really important so you know like I wouldn't say was it a five-star match oh fuck no it doesn't mean but the yeah the emotion and everything behind it the way the crowd were just so invested in it and the way that they went off and you know, there's some, you know, photos out there, like my son came and joined me in the ring, you know, and we were holding up the title and on, oh, and, and that sort of stuff. Like, you can't, you know, you can't replicate that. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like having a kid? What's like, I, I obviously, I have a little fur babies at the moment, and, like, one day I will have children of my own, my little Rodigas or something. But what is it like having a child and still breastfed? Yeah, well, it's wild. Like, so our our son, like Connor, he we only know this. He was born into this business, all right. So, me and Money met wrestling. So that's you know, and and, and my auntie Barb would always go down tag wrestle because that's how you get babies. And <laughs> did you guys divorce recently? Yeah, oh. uh, sorry to hear about that. I was sorry, but. You know, like, so with him, he was always born into his business, right? So, I, you know, the last show that I ever valeted, I was pregnant with him. Oh! Right? Yeah. Oh! And then it was Fred. Yeah, yeah. And then it's, you know, and then he was going to shows from the moment he was born. Like, I reckon it was a couple of weeks and he was at his first. Yeah. Like, so it's always a little bubba G. Yeah. And yeah. the bubba G. He's just, he's, you know, like, so he's, fuck, you know, he's ACW literally born and bred. Like, he's knowing nothing else. And it's, what uh you know the funniest thing about it is watching someone like him peeing in the ring so we've never trained him so we don't you know like yeah he's too young he's 13 just for the right you know like so he's very he's very young but he has like this natural ability if you see him run the ropes and stuff like that like you can like out wrestling people you're like are you for real right now just from what he has absorbed in his life yeah he will uh will he be getting in the business i don't know <laughs> Do we want him in the business? I don't know. Look, if he wanted to get in the business, would we support him? Absolutely. But, you know, sometimes do you want your kid doing that sort of stuff? I don't know, you know. Like, it's, he's playing a lot of stuff in and hopefully that kid's That's a cool structure. Yeah. Stuff is cool. Yeah. Stuff is great. Yeah. Yeah. If my kids in the future are watching, you're not fucking wrestling. You're not doing this shit. <laughs> fucking body slam you if you ever suggest this. Just come to Auntie Erica and I'll teach you how to wrestle, and right? That's it. And I guess, you know, on the flip side, if he does want to do it, then we're probably going to be the ones who we don't want him to train it. Well, of course. <laughs> like, who else would do it? Yeah, you got to You guys have to. He has to. That's pretty cool. What was it? All right, this is probably a bit TMI, but this one's for the girls. I'm petrified of my vagina <laughs> ripping. Is that a thing? Like, that is a thing. Your vagina can rip. Yes. <gasps> yes. I mean, and, you know, yeah. uh, do we want the TMI? Yeah. Yeah, oh, tell me. Cool. I want to learn about your vagina. Learn oh. about my vagina. Yeah. <laughs> so my my son was very, you know, like this. You know what I was saying about listening to your own body, right? Like, yes. My son started measuring too big towards the end of the pregnancy. Yeah. I kept going to the doctor. I'm like, you, you've got to get enough fuck that. Like, this is, this is not going to He's like, ah, you're a woman. What do you mean? You know? Oh, gee. Well, lo and behold, the kid got stuck. No shit. Yes. And to the point they use like like a whole like suction cap situation. <laughs> and I'm talking like suction cap on his head, you know, like like this, knees off on the table. <laughs> he was that stuck that the suction cap comes to us flying up the doctor goes flying across the room. And me just, you know, in all my pain glory. relief glory was like, I fucking told you so. Good. Yeah, you know, had to get that one in, but we had to get rushed into an emergency because he was stuck. And it was either going to go one or two ways, rather we're going to use faucets or we're going to have to go into a C-section if he's going to be that fast stuck. When they do use the faucets, they they cut you. So avoid ripping, you get the cut. And I swear to God, still to this day, I will never forget that sound. And if he's ever used to this crap, thick fabric, like yeah, I have. jeans. Yeah, that's exactly I what know it that sounds noise. like. Can, there was a lot of pain medication, so of course I didn't feel it. But there was definitely, you know, a very high comment of like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Does <laughs> it? It was, yeah, not fun. Yeah. <laughs> no. Erica, they're yeah. going to cut your cooch. <laughs> yes. 
So we take away the drugs scrimmage. I'm definitely yeah. taking all yeah. of the drugs. If I'm having a child, I'm gonna be high as shit. Yeah. Doing lines on the uh, <laughs> on the delivery table. Let's do lines on my newborn's back. I am done. Speaking <laughs> of doing lines on a newborn's back, you want to do another card? Yeah. All right. That's a weird segue. What? <laughs> it's the only one that made sense. <laughs> Oh, wow. The fertility <laughs> card. We're so fast, that. That's fucked. We literally oh. got the fertility card. All right. We're just talking about this. Obviously, the cards want us to talk about vaginas, clearly. Yeah. But in saying that, it's the sun card. It's the card of life. And again, we're going back to the school and stuff because you guys give so many people a life. You guys give them courage and life and independence and you encourage them to change, you know. But what this could be, I feel like these two cards uh, have a connection together. So this card of fertility, it could be the fertility card of giving birth to a new idea, a new concept, a new perspective, a new mindset. It could be anything. It could be a baby. It could be a little bubbergy, but I don't think it's a bubbergy. I think it's a new idea, and I feel like you guys have created a new platform that involves lightning and thunder. Yeah, we'll so be... wrestling baby. Then you have a wrestling baby. You want to tell us about your your wrestling baby? Yeah, so it launched just last week. So something that we've been working on really hard in the background is that we wanted to create an online presence and you know, and in the form of showcasing local talents and in the form of showcasing our talent coming up, and we launched a YouTube TV series that is called Thunderstruck. And so that is our, Thunderstruck. That's our baby. We'll Link in the description. Yeah, yeah, we'll plug that shit. I, I watched it. I watched the first episode. I came home from work and it popped up. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'll put it on. It was only like half an hour. It was like super easy to digest. I thoroughly enjoyed Love watching it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I really liked it. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Mid-South, like pro wrestling. That's the vibe. Yeah, just like yeah. old territory wrestling, and that's what's missing in Australia. Yeah, like it's very storyline based. Yeah. So it's very you know a lot of a lot of stories, you know the old vignettes and promos and yeah, and so it, it's it's for the great so man. Yeah, it it's, is. Yeah. I I'm excited to see how it blossoms. I know, I know we might have some familiar faces on there. Oh. Um... Maybe, maybe, possibly, definitely tune in because we could be on all of them. But you should check. We're not going to tell you. No, no. Why would we tell you? No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Let's pull another card. Let's see what else the spirits want us to talk about. They like this one. He's like, yeah, he keeps yeah. coming out. Yeah, there's yeah. another one. God yeah. damn. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's nice. We got the card of contentment, but it's a gumnut blossom. <laughs> That's so cute. Nut. Blo Hips. <laughs> <laughs> Trees for nut, guys. Yeah, shout out tree nut. Tree nut. Tree uh. nut sap juice. We love that shit. No, I feel like this card, the card of contentment, I feel like, especially over the past couple of years, you have had a life-changing struggle. And I feel like throughout this change, we can see it in the cards. You... You had that lightning and like and that thunder in your life. You had that black cloud over your head and you you pushed through the clouds. You got through the clouds by using your independence, by remembering who the fuck you are. You're a red belly black snake. You're fierce, you're venomous, you're a predator, you're ready, you're ready to go. And you put that energy into creating something new, whether it be the Thunderstruck show, whether it be yourself, your carnival diet, like you've created and changed your entire perspective of life and i feel like by you going on that journey you found some sort of contentment in your life yeah, so probably age too yeah bit of peace peace yeah yeah but i i feel like it's a beautiful there do you feel yeah. content yeah it's, it's a nice it's a nice place to be right like it's and whether you look at that at, at age or going through like a struggle and and, and you know, overcoming it to be sort of out on that other side to know that everything happens for a reason and there's a lesson behind it and to be open enough to learn those lessons and just, you know, and there's just something about being on the other side of it that's just it's peaceful there. Yes, it's peaceful. You know? It's badass. Yeah. It's pretty it's pretty rad, dude. I, I'm I'm glad you're still here. And I'm glad you're healthy. I'm glad you're happy. 
it's it's beautiful. Oh, that's real cool. But I have one more. I have one more question. Um, what do you think happens to you when you die? I'm a reincarnation. You like reincarnation? Yep. yep. I think that this is not our first time around the sun. You know, and I, I don't think it's our first time here. And I don't think it's going to be our last time there. So I believe in sort of karmic and mix. I don't know, soul ties. I sort of think that you then pick your next journey and your next experiences and learn the lessons that you need to learn in that lifetime. And I, you know, I, yeah. 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 I yeah. don't oh, no. Like, I don't even, yeah. I think you're not obviously going to come back at the same time or anything like that. But I don't think that you come back to learn different lessons that you choose sort of that as well. Like, you choose you come back to where you come back to and, and all that sort of stuff. I think that, yeah, like, it's just, I don't know, you know, like sometimes there's things that are really familiar in life, you know, like, wow, like, you know, like, you've seen this before. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah like, I felt this before. Feel old soul right? You don't feel like this is like, you know, like the brand new and deja vu and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. In uh, my culture, we, we believe in that too. We believe in reincarnation. When you die, your physical body dies, but your spirit moves on. And your spirit will eventually find another vessel, whether it be animal, tree, a uh, human, like, you'll come back you might not come back straight away but you'll eventually find your tribe again you find your mob again and i have another question for you we would do the thing if you was to reincarnate and you could choose what would you want to reincarnate as it's a koala a koala Fuck yeah. why a koala i'm obsessed with them. i fucking love koala i just you know like what is it because they're stoners? They're always yeah. high. That's yeah. why it is. Tree, stone, yeah. just yeah, just chill spot. I get that vibe about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grunts every now and then. <laughs> eat some, eat some, eat some wings and just you know, you just vibe out. It's like, and they're just like chill. They just like trundle along, and they're real horny. They do. Yeah, well, they're fun. yeah. They're, yeah. I've oh. heard them draw. Yeah, yeah. So we we stayed. We went camping once. I think in the Grampians, and yeah. it was like May to so it was a trip. Yeah, it was like get yeah, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. Right, it's up in the tree. You're like what? Yeah, well, no, I call it drop bears. Like you actually like yeah, yeah, but you know, I I love that shit. Yeah, I love that shit. Are we nearly ready to have a near death experience? I agree. Five ten minutes, all right? That's cool. Let's shuffle these cards again. Let's pull a card about your match. You've you've wrestled Sid twice, and you know Sid has gone through some changes in these past few years as well. So it's been quite some time that you guys have touched mm -hmm. now i don't know what to expect because he's pretty unpredictable um but you've also you've got some balls about you too so let's see what what they're gonna say about this map what does riley need to feel or feel before she goes into this battle with the jurassic toy Skid marker. I'm that one. The spike of that. Oh. You got that card of secrets. Oh. All well, right. The so, sun and the moon. Right? Sun and the moon. Yeah. Oh, well, you're just in tune, aren't you? All right. You're real in tune with that moon cycle. Um, You got the card of secrets. Now, look, this could be a warning um, because... I know Sid is full of secrets. You know, he's predictable. He's a very magical man. He, he's a very, very magical man. And he's he's more than a man. He's an animal. He's a man. He's a, a fighter. He's, yeah, he's a lot. He's intimidating. He bites your face off and put the claw on, and you won't be able to let go. But he's full of secrets. Now, maybe you have a secret? A secret? I don't know. Do I? A secret I don't know. Open. A secret, you are a secret weapon. You are a secret weapon. Let's pull out another one. Maybe that will almost be him. It's, it's maybe this card will be soon. Yeah. Yeah. Reverberations, clap sticks. Yeah. All right. Clap, clap. Don't forget who you are. Reverberations. It's like feeling the spirits from underneath you and really listening again to your intuition. Listen to your mooey. Listen to what. These spirits in this room are telling you to do in the rain. I feel like that's going to really help you. You're going to need to tap into something that you don't usually tap into. I see a line. Mm. 
um, reverberations. It's it's reverberating the voices off the walls, off your heart, off your soul. It's yeah. So there, I'm gonna pull this title for you. So that's yeah. guys. So okay, yeah. Soul journey. Okay. Riley, you're gonna go on a soul journey when you're wrestling suit again. All right, I feel like the first couple of times you wrestled him, he was kind of a little fire inside you. Yeah? yeah. Like he's an opponent, he's a tough opponent, but he also gave you something you didn't think you had yeah. inside you. Yeah. Definitely, definitely agree with that. I feel like you got to tap into that today. You're really going to have to tap into your guts, get dirty, get out of the comfort zone. Fuck yeah, get yeah. out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You, you can't grow if you're comfortable. The only place and the only way anyone grows is if they're comfortable with being uncomfortable. All right. And this one's coming out to you. Oh, okay, good. You got the card of strategy. So I don't think this match is going to be a card of strength or speed. I think it's going to be <laughs> technical. I think it's going to be technical. You're going to have to think of a decent strategy to overcome Makes fun. Sid. Makes yeah. All right. Because he's strong. He's a strong boy. He's also incredibly quick. He's yeah. a very agile young man. But I feel like your strategy is going to have to be on point. It's like, it's remember like the jujitsu stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean it's, a, a battle of strength or speed. It's a battle of technique, of preciseness. Yeah. Bit like a game of chess. It is a game of chess. It's human chess. Wrestling is human chess. You're thinking two steps ahead once you've got someone in a hole. You're thinking, all right, this person might do this. This person might do that. I've got to have a reversal for this. I've got to have a reversal for that. Because you don't know what the hell they're going to do. You don't know if they're going to go out and punch you in the face. You don't know if they're going to put you in a chokehold. You have no idea. So you got to keep on your feet. You've got to keep it with good strategy, a clean mind. You've got to go on a journey in your soul to uncover the secrets yeah. to win. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm pretty, pretty proud. Do you have any pre-match rituals? No, I'll just say like a, you know, a quiet little uh, word, word to the universe. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. keep me safe. Keep them safe. Yeah. Don't let us shit the bed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I do that too. I have a little chat with my Mui. I'm like, all right, bitch. Bring it in. What are we what are we doing? What are we doing? All right. Now, Miss Riley. Are you ready? I am ready as all over me to have a new death experience. Dun -dun! All right, let's get this shit on the road. I'm so excited to it. I think it's been a great oh. Yeah, yeah. Very expected. Let me light it. Good. What? Here. Hey, Rod. Hi. She's scared. Hi, guys. Scared. There's. Look at her eyes. She's good. Are you timing? Yeah. So. Oh, you? What is that? Big new thought on. No shooting. Any down of this? Is he down of those? Maybe. Yes, she might be telling me all about it. Mad as we can. Yes, it's like that. Well, I think that just fell off. So. It's a wall. I don't know. Why stay like you? Fuck, I've got to stop this. I have one down. Well, do that thing.
Shit.